All right, so today we're going to talk about the bi-directional D-Shot RPM notch filters that are going to come in Betaflight 4.0. One of the first things you need to know is this is pretty, I don't know if I'm going to say experimental, but it's still definitely in the process of development as of the relaunch of this video. We'll see where it gets once Betaflight 4.0 is in stable release. It should be, uh, I would think, uh, ready at that time. One of the downsides of it right now is it only works for certain flight controllers. So there's a couple restrictions. First, you have to have a 32-bit ESC, period, as of right now. Second, you have to have that flashed with certain firmware, uh, which is linked here. Third, it only works with certain flight controllers. And fourth, even this doesn't reflect what's in the master as of right now. So for example, I'm using a Revolt OSD board and that has N channels. So what the heck is an N channel? I don't really know that much. All I know is that if you go in to you know beta flight source main where the targets are and go into the target C. See how it's said down here it has channel 2N, channel 3N, so on and so forth. That won't work. So there is a branch that Joe has, and, and I know the code edit, it's not that complicated to change this to 3.3 three and change this to 3 or something like that. I, I have it. Um, but at the end of the day, you have to change this to 1. That is needed that's not merged into the master yet because it's still kind of under development so yeah um, it, the best thing I can say is these targets if you want to if you have one of these targets to make sure it's gonna work just browse out it's not that complicated go to uh, beta flight beta flight here source main targets find your target and sometimes your targets like this says revolt but I have a revolt OSD well, it's the same target. Um, well, it's two different targets, but it's under the same code um, for where it's compiled and stuff. So you go into the targets.c, which they all have a targets.c, and go down here. If you see any of the motor, see how it says one motor, one, two, three, and four? If they have any ends in it, it's not going to work. Now, if it is on this list, um, somebody can cut you a hex if you really want to test it and try it. But like I said, this is still under development. So you can read down through here to get the setup, but let's talk about what is this. Okay, to demonstrate this a little bit, I'm going to go into the Excel file here. Uh, and so what we have is shown, and I don't have the RPM notch filters modeled in here yet, but this is the dynamic notch. And right now that has a default of a Q of 120. And the Q, again, just adjusts the width. So if I put 500 here, you can see it gets narrower up top and then the latency goes down. So we're at 120. Uh, some people are moving that up. And then honestly, uh, by default, it's at an eighth width, which actually has two of them. And the reason that we had the cascaded notch filters, because it was recognized that you know, for this high attenuation, basically letting zero noise through down here, that has to be right right on the noise and that is very difficult to be perfectly right exactly on the noise so you get leaking on either side so it was you know developed that hey well, what if we just did two notch filters really close to each other and then you can get this you know it, it's going to kind of flank it and then you're going to get at least uh, 0.4 or, or less depending you know if you bring this together um, you know you can do four four uh, percent you know you get uh, 0.1 Amp, you know, times the amplitude of the noise coming through instead of the whole thing. And since we can't track it exactly perfectly, it gives us a little margin of error. So that's why the cascaded dynamic notch was introduced. So for the RPM filters, there's, there's one thing that's still, you know, the cascaded dynamic notch, it's only one notch filter on each axis. Now they act independently. So you'll have the, the roll axis and that's moving around and tracking uh, noise. The pitch is doing its separate thing and they might be tracking at different spots and then you have the yaw. However, really there's four peaks uh, on each axis, right? Because there's four motors. Now, generally when the motor RPMs are around the same, that peaks, they amplify each other or they're all in the same spot. But as you're doing a roll or flip or in a turn, you know, like a race turn, then those peaks can spread out. Well, the dynamic notch can only be one place at one time, so it's going to hop between whatever the, the highest peaks are and, and just keep hopping back and forth to crush the highest ones, and then some of the other ones get through. So Joe Lucid came along and said, hey, what if we can just 
track that using the RPM data, one of the things you had to do is work with the BL Heli guys to get the RPM telemetry data first. It comes right back through the signal pad. You don't have to have RPM telemetry hooked up at all. Second, it has to be it had to be a lot faster. Uh, the old RPM telemetry was, was pretty slow. Now it's down to well, at least it's down to less than a millisecond uh, in speed coming back. I know that we we have one millisecond uh, samples um, for where the notches are tracking from. So it. Presumably it's less, I know it's less than that. I don't know if it's one millisecond exactly or, or what it is, but um, yeah, so it's a lot quicker, uh, so on and so forth. And that's why you have that special hex you have to flash to your 32-bit ESCs. So that's what it is. It's notch filters that aren't reading uh, vibrations, so, so to say. They're really getting their cue from the motor RPMs where they need to be, and it's really four notch filters on each axis. So there's four on the roll, four on the pitch, four on the yaw. In addition to that, you can have a multiplier for a uh, up to the third fundamental frequency. So let's talk about that. Okay, so when you look, uh, the best way to s explain this is when you look at a plasma tree graph, you can see this band if you run, you know, do a log and you don't even have to get raw noise. You can see it here in the raw noise, but if you put that through after it's filtered, you usually see these bands. This is the fundamental frequency. So that's the peak, uh, that's the vibration that the motors are giving off. However, there's this thing that you'll get a, a first harmonic and a second harmonic of that same noise. So the first harmonic is usually twice that of the fundamental. So the fundamental's here. So the first harmonic, you can kind of see it here uh, it's very light, so it, it loses strength, and you can kind of see it right through here, and it goes up, and it's usually twice, so it'd be around 800, uh, twice the fundamental frequency, and then the third is two times that. So on each axis, if you have up to the three harmonics turned on, the fundamental, first harmonic, and second harmonic, you can actually have 12 notches on each axis and they're tracking basically the motor RPM. It's really the first four are tracking the motor and then there's just two to be set two times and four times that. So this is all great. And if you're interested, you know, well, how do you load this up? Well, you follow these instructions. It's only working right now for F4 boards. It's only those certain targets and not all those targets, at least the one, the OSD one is not actually in the master. Like I said, if I looked in, the, this is the master code and that stalls the end, uh, end channels there. So honestly, you should follow these, are, these instructions. If they're not making sense to you or this isn't getting you through it, then reach out to myself uh, or you can go on the Betaflight Slack, the Panamic Filter Channel, because if it's not making sense and it's not getting you through it, then the instructions need to be modified some. I follow them, work fine for me. So just read through them. You see it says 36 notches, so on and so forth. It talks about the bi-directional. First step is you got to get the Bale Heli ERPM telemetry signal line support hex. So go ahead and hit a bit, you know, click the link there. That takes you into here. You would click on the uh, code there. From there, you find whichever hex you would need for your Bale Heli. Click on that. Then you have to right click on raw and hit save link as, and that will download the hex file. I show you that because that messed me up, but I'm not going to show you how to flash that, how to figure out from BL Heli which hex you need. If you don't know how to do those things, you really shouldn't be flying this right now. So yeah, there, that, just like I'm going to take from Bardwell's, there's kind of a barrier to entry here. And if you know all about that stuff, you're probably okay. If you don't, then just wait till the stable comes out. Honestly, when stable comes out, this might be, a, hopefully it will be a lot easier. Uh, they're working on it so it works for um, any flight control board and hopefully even BL Heli S ESCs, but not sure yet if that's going to be the case. From there, you want to make sure your loop times are reduced to low enough that when you go into the CLI and use the tasks command, that this task for the PID loop and gyro are running underneath 100%. So 
the recommendation is 4K 4K for now. You need to turn off DMA burst, which is a command line entry. You need to turn on the new scheduler, the optimization scheduler for it. And then you would turn on the bi-directional D shot, which then would uh, activate so that that telemetry is coming back through the signal. So it's sending a signal to the ESC for, you know, for what RPM it wants or what uh, command in motion it wants, and then it's getting the RPM signal back. Third thing is you need to count the poles on your motor. So these are the little things that stick out that have the windings around it that drive the magnets. Typically it's 14, but you better count. Mine had 12. RCX motors had 12, which I was really surprised. I never counted them before. So yeah, do count them. It's really important. If this is off, the whole thing's not gonna work right. You're gonna have a bad experience. After you have all the signal stuff and everything's working, uh, what you'll need to do is plug in a battery. You know, you reboot the flight controller, get a battery plugged in, and you should be able to go into the firmware and type status. And then you should see the RPM stuff down here being reported. It should say all zeros, actually. I don't have a battery plugged in. Also, do, again, check that your, your rate here is matching your gyro rate. So for 4K, it's 250. It's not going to be exactly perfect. Sometimes it'll be a little bit above or a little bit below. And again, go to tasks and make sure that this task and all these tasks are running under 100%. If you're going over, you're going to get jitter, and we don't want that jitter. Finally, and of course with your props off, go into the motors tab, plug in a battery, see if you can spin up the motors. If they work, that means your new hex for BL Heli is working. That means your um, bi-directional uh, should be working. One of the things you can try to look at, and I haven't done this, so what I, what I did is I would keep the props off, uh, go in to uh, the CLI again, type in uh, get debug, and set your debug mode to RPM filter. This will take the traces, traces uh, one, two, three, and four, and it'll show you what the Hertz value is by taking the ERPM data back from the ELC, using the number of poles to calculate what the peak noise should be at, at the, uh, for each motor, and it will record that in the log. So with props off, unplug, obviously, take it, you know, Go arm it with your you know, battery plugged in, controller connected, and just jiggle sticks and you know, ramp the RPM and stuff like that. You only need a couple seconds. Download that log and then take a look at it. What you should see on debug, uh, like I said, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, you should see traces like this where you can see the RPM data filtering back in and then you can see where it's going to command those notches to be on for each motor. You can see the spread here. So that thing that we were talking about, now this is a, a full flight. So you can see, you know, we had different peaks at different parts of the flight here, right? And the dynamic notch, even here, there's just even at full throttle, no stick, you can see there's even a spread here and that spread was recognized and that's why cascaded dynamic notches to flank that, that peak uh, noise between that spread. Okay, after you have that all set up, you can go back to the CLI and type get RPM, and this will be all the RPM notch uh, codes. You can see there's some stuff up here that's just OSD stuff, but down here, harmonics. The default is set to three. You, you can saw that plot. I don't really have anything above the fundamental, so I'm just gonna, I didn't actually fly this yet. I'm gonna do one. Uh, the Q, I think the default's 500. And really the goal with a, this approach is if you can get, you can see right here through a notch filter of 120, just one of them, the latency, the phase delay, not latency, I shouldn't say latency, the phase delay associated with that is 0.3. And how these, why these things are so attractive is, you know, if you look at a low pass filter and even the PT1, you know, again, not to beat this drum constantly, but Look at the amount of attenuation we're getting right here, where our motor peak is, which is what we want to crush. We're getting far more attenuation than any low pass filter, but look at the delay associated with the low pass filter down low in our control frequencies, 1.1 milliseconds, where this is 0.3. So 0.3 is what we want. Now, Joe Lucid, he really wants, you know, there's four of these instead of just one. So the key is to have a pretty high Q factor. However, we're noticing some things with, as your Q gets higher, there's uh, some other side effects, so they're kind of working through those. I'm not going to go into those, those details, but it's really 0.1 times 4, 
Uh, if you had three harmonics on, then it would be that times three. So, you know, it's getting up there a little bit. So I, I want to turn those upper harmonics off. Uh, also, what I'm going to, you know, what I have mine set to as well is I'm bringing this down to, to two instead of 500. So all those settings are here. Here's the cue. Uh, you can see the min, so it won't let the notches go below 100 hertz. There is some notches on the D term, but those are turned off. We found that it doesn't, you don't really need them because, you know, it, it, they're going to basically be following the same RPM, right? The same signal. So if you killed the noise from the gyro at that exact same, at that exact spot, you're not the D term ones aren't giving you that much more advantage at the exact same spot. Sure, it helps on the flanks a little bit because there's still, you know, it still takes time for a signal to come in and all that jazz. So it helps on the flanks a little bit, but, uh, and I haven't done a lot of testing on here but from the, what the guys are reporting, it wasn't useful. So by setting the, uh, the harmonics to zero, that turns them off. Same for up here, if you wanted to do some comparisons. If you wanted to have it all set up, but just do a comparison of, you know, D, in, the RPM notches on versus off, if you set harmonics to zero, that would turn them off and then it'd be back to just the dynamic notch and the low pass filters. Again, here's the stuff for the D term, which is off anyways. And then this is a hex that I have that smooths out the RPM signal. So there's some jitter in the RPM signal where it's jumping around a lot. So we're applying a low pass filter against that to smooth it out. So that's kind of the testing. If you want that uh, hex, uh, hit me up. I, I think it's better. We're looking at different, different ones. So you can see this is not a lot of my old videos when we were talking about this develop, stuff in development like Cascade. That was all kind of done. This is in process, but there's a lot of interest. So I figured I'd do this video. It is recommended to keep the dynamic notch still enabled because we're getting information from the ESCs and the motors on where the notches should be. But if you have wind or other outside influences causing noise, just resonance in your, frig in your um, frame, um, your antennas are wobbling around or something, your motors don't know about that, where the dynamic notch will just detect that noise and hit it. If you have a bent prop or your props are worn, RPM filters don't know about that, but the dynamic notch is gonna detect the real noise. And, and jump around to, to hit that for you. I would recommend uh, turning, turning it down a little bit. So for that, I would go into the CLI and type in get DYN. And in here, I've turned off the width to zero. So it's just one dynamic notch. And I've turned this up to 200 as well. And uh, I think I've left everything else the same. So yeah, you'd still, you know, same thing with the dynamic uh, low pass filters. I still have those on. Uh, guys are running them with no low pass filter essentially anymore on the gyro. I haven't done that yet. I haven't gotten there, but I wouldn't jump there right away. To do that, you can set uh, your max uh, to, I'm sorry, your max to zero, and that would turn off your gyro uh, low pass filter. But they are running, they're con continuing to keep the dynamic low pass filters on for the D term. So, I think in the optimal state that I've seen somebody running is they have the RPM filters. I don't know how many harmonics they have on, but if they have three, I would think they could probably turn that down. Uh, they have the dynamic notch on, and then that's it for the gyro. Just the gyro is all notches. Then on the D term, they have one dynamic low pass filter, and then that's it. And with that, they're you know saying they're really happy with it, uh, and the latency is should be really competitive. A lot of advantage of this is that when you throttle up in a prop wash, obviously your RPMs go up right away so that it, to the, the RPM notches move real quick. Same thing for the low pass filters. They're toggled to your stick input, your throttle. So those immediately move up. The dynamic notch does take a little time. It takes about 20 to 25 milliseconds, I think Ken last said, for it to you know see the noise on you know, analyze it during the FFT and then slide up. So the dynamic notch is always kind of lagging behind where those peaks are. It's only 25 milliseconds, but nevertheless, and kind of what they say is it's mopping up. So that's kind of the filter setup that some pilks are running. I would step slowly into that. Uh, hopefully you're into logging and, and checking your motor temp side. So yeah, that is the RPM notch filters that should be out with will be out with Betaflight 4.0. Uh, you can see 4.0's release target date is April 1st. I think everything is on track with the generic 
generic targets to make that happen. You can see we're 93% complete on, there's 34 uh, PRs targeted yet to be opened or uh, closed or merged or whatever uh, for that. So it seems like everything's on track. If uh, census tell me right, you know, March, around March 1st, they're gonna put out the release candidates. So if it's something that, you know, through this video, you're like, Jesus, I don't know if I'm ready for all this, then I would definitely not do this at all. The release can't, I would definitely wait at least for the release candidates uh, or stable. And I'm not sure how, we'll see where this goes between now and honestly, it's only like a week or so uh, before the release candidates and the feature freeze uh, to see how ready it will be, if it will be. It's not gonna be on by default, so you'd have to go through all these steps. Um, the BL heli flashing is, is one of the things I would think, no matter which way around it, you would have to flash uh, updated BL Heli firmware. If, they, if Joe gets it to work with BL Heli S, it's still going to be updated firmware. Okay, well that's going to do it for this intro into it and what it is and what's coming. Uh, special thanks uh, always to the guys that are actually making this happen. You know, Joe Lucid's a big drop. You know, he is. This is his baby, uh, and everybody else that's doing the testing. Zach Bismar, uh, Mark, was uh, his Bismar, um, Chris Thompson, Fugin, uh, uh, everybody else. I'm you know. I'm a, just all the people that are in the dynamic filter channel. Thanks everybody. Hope this helped.